Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and we just got the consumer price index inflation rating for last month in Canada. The consensus was for 3.8% and we came in hotter at 4.0%. Now some people might think the Bank of Canada will see this as a sign that inflation is being stubborn and they'll have to continue increasing interest rates in order to put more pressure on inflation to go back down. But I think that would be a dumb decision and probably not what they're going to do. Because in today's video, we're going to be looking at the data and I want to share with you why I think if they want inflation to come down, then raising interest rates is one of the worst things that the Bank of Canada can do. Because given the information we have right now, I'm going to explain why holding interest rates where they are in their meeting next month is a way better solution. So first of all, let's break down what this 4% is and look at the components inside the CPI. So the Consumer Price Index is a basket of eight components weighed differently. So for example, shelter has a bigger impact on the overall inflation than say health services with shelter making up 28% and health making up 5%. And that's why even though on a year-over-year -year change, both shelter and health have gone up about 6%, but out of the 4.0 CPI inflation for August, shelter makes up 1.7% of that, so that's almost half, whereas health makes up just 0.3% of that overall 4% number. So the reason I said the Bank of Canada should not tighten monetary policy any further is because interest rates will only affect some of these components, but not others. And the biggest one we're going to talk about in detail, shelter, is actually one that increases and costs more when interest rates are going up. But let's go over these one by one for the month of August. So for food, it contributed about a quarter to the overall 4% annualized inflation. But when we look at the breakdown of the data from Statistics Canada, and from July to August, you can see the month over month is down. So the price of food actually decreased month over month. And that's a relief for anyone who eats food, which is everyone. Now, I also have the previous month's data. This is going from June to July, and we can see that food increased 0.4%. So on a month-over-month -month basis, we're going from inflation to deflation. And on a year-over-year -year basis, it's also dropped. From last year's July to this year's July, food was up 7.8%. But in the latest August reading, last 12 months, food is only 6.8% as shown here we saw earlier. So the 10 interest rate hikes that the central bank has done is working. This is the second most significant component in the CPI basket by weight, which is food. And we're seeing this going down. So if they just hold interest rates where they are, I think food will continue to show signs of deflationary pressure. Okay, now shelter. And this is one that surprised a lot of economists. And it's why overall CPI came in higher than expected. According to Statistics Canada, shelter prices are accelerating led by rent. Now, what does shelter include? Well, there's rent, which makes up 6.4 of the 26.8% weighting. And then there are things for homeowners to consider like mortgage interest costs. So you can see how increasing interest rates will actually increase the mortgage costs of the shelter component, which will increase the overall CPI. Now, there are a lot of people in Canada also renting, but when you increase interest rates at such a rapid pace, like the Bank of Canada has done since early last year, what happens is that this higher cost of money gets passed on to renters because there's not enough time to absorb this extra cost. Okay, so let's say you have a two-bedroom rental property in this building downtown here in Vancouver, and it's on a pretty high floor, so you have some nice views, and you've been renting it out to this couple for a few years. The tenant are a couple of professionals with high incomes. They're paying you, the landlord, $3,000 every month, which was the going rate at the time that they moved in four or five years ago, and then you were paying about $3,000 a month in mortgage. Plus, there's strata fees and taxes, so let's say $3,500 a month, because it's really hard to cash flow in a city like Vancouver. Now, for a while, this was okay. You had to put in an additional $500 a month, but at least you were building equity in this investment property. So several years ago, this was a pretty decent setup to have. However, today in 2023, the price of housing has gone off the charts. A typical two-bedroom condo in Vancouver is up 15.7% from last year and is now about $3,900 for a typical two-bedroom. And this is the average across the city. But because you own a really nice two-bedroom condo in downtown Vancouver, you can actually rent it out for about $4,200 today. But here's the problem. Meanwhile, you're 
your four-year mortgage term is about to come up, and you basically have to renew now at 6% interest rate. This means your total cost is not $3,500 anymore because it's about to go to $5,000 a month. And everyone with a mortgage in Canada who bought in the last 10 or 15 years is going to deal with this reality in the next few years if they haven't already. Interest rates were low for a very long time, and now they're substantially higher, so it doesn't matter if you choose variable or fixed. The upcoming mortgage term is going to be very expensive. And here's the problem. Even though your cost is going up, you can't raise the couple's rent by more than 2% is the maximum this year. So you're going to be negative cash flow by about $2,000 a month. And that's just not sustainable. So you're left with no choice. This is an investment property. So you're going to have to sell the place because the current economics just doesn't work. So now we get to why higher interest rates affect renters. The vast majority of people buying homes today are end users. They want to buy their first home or they want to sell their current home and move into a bigger place. So it's very likely that this condo is going to be sold to someone who's going to live in it, which means this couple that was living here before, well, they have to move out to make room for a new family who wants to make use of the space for themselves. It's not very likely in today's market with these kinds of interest rates for an investor to come and buy this as an investment property because as I mentioned earlier, the economics just doesn't work out. So that's why investors are pretty much not looking to buy these days. Okay, so you sold your place and then we have a new family moving into the condo living in there. So what does this mean for the available rental units? Well, let's say in the neighborhood, there were originally 20 available units for people to rent, including your condo, which you rented to that couple. But because you sold, now the available units to rent decrease. So now there's 19. And a couple months later, somebody else's mortgage is gonna come up for renewal and they're gonna to wanna to sell as well. And over time, you have more and more people getting out of the rental property business until the economics become feasible again. And when you have fewer available places to rent, the price of rent gets bid up. So ultimately, the previous couple now has to pay market rent if they want to live in a similar place. They just have to pay a lot more than before, but they were previously living on borrowed time anyway. And this is why shelter prices have been going up, with a big part of that being rent. Mortgage interest costs, of course, also going up as well, up nearly 31%. Next on the list, we have household, and this is a relatively large weighting at 14%. This looks at the price of everything from furniture to pet supplies to your internet and cell phone bill, and it's basically unchanged from a year ago. Clothing making up just under 5% of the CPI basket came in at 1.7%. The next component is transport, which includes gasoline and driving around. This is a fairly significant weighting at 16%, and it's up 2.3% for the year. Now, in the previous month, transportation was negative 1%, and the reason was because last month was kind of a rare situation where you have gasoline down minus 12.9% year over year. And of course, that's not sustainable for a long period of time, which is why this month it bounced back to 08 so you have a more typical positive number for transportation. And why was it so negative the previous month? Here's a price chart of crude oil, and each bar represents a month. And you can see that compared to the previous year's July to this year's July, it's down quite a lot. But for August, it's more flat. And if crude oil continues to go up for the rest of the year, then I would expect gasoline prices to follow it and go higher as well. But it's hard to predict where energy prices will go because when you look at the last two years in the final quarters of the year, oil has been pretty much just chopping like it's gone up and down, but mostly just stayed around where it was. So if we have that again for this year, then I wouldn't expect the gasoline price here and uh, the transportation number here to continue going much higher than what it already is. And then the final three here, we have health up 5.8% over the last year, which is the same as the previous month. So that rate of inflation is pretty constant. Recreation making up about one-tenth of the CPI basket. This is at 2.2%. But when we take a closer look at the month-over-month -month data, it's actually down minus 0.9%. Whereas the previous month from June to July, it was still positive at 2.1. At least on a month over month basis, the price for recreation, education, and reading is going down. And by the way, I'm not sure who is spending a notable amount of money on reading. It seems like most of the reading material people read, at least today, seem to not cost anything or very little if it's like a newspaper subscription or something. But anyway, short term, this is going down. And then finally, the last component is alcohol, tobacco, and cannabis, so products with excise tax. 
but this makes up the smallest component of the CPI basket at just 4.5%. It is up 5.2% year over year with a monthly increase of 0.4. Here are the Bank of Canada's interest rate hikes so far. There were 10 over the last couple of years, putting us at 5% right now. And the next interest rate announcement by the BOC is in October. Now here's why I think choosing to raise the interest rate is not a good idea. If we take a look at the major components that make up the basket, so with a weighting of let's say 10% or higher, everything except shelter is showing signs of disinflation or deflation even. So for food, there is actually disinflation and prices are not rising as fast as they were. If you go to the store, prices are now only 6.9% higher over a year ago compared to 8.5% higher in July. In fact, if you look at a shorter time frame, prices are actually down in the month of August. Now, shelter is going higher, but that's because raising interest rates make mortgage payments more expensive, which indirectly forces the rental market to tighten, and we see higher rental prices. So everybody's shelter is going up. You need time for the real estate market to absorb the higher interest rates. Otherwise, you're just going to get this shock where you see mortgage interest costs rise 31% and you have rents going up like 29% in Toronto, 20% in even places like Halifax. Next, we have households, which is pretty much flat, as you can see the year-over-year -year change. And even though it takes up 14% of the CPI pie, it added zero to August CPI uh, number because there is no inflation in this category. The next big component here, transportation, is kind of going up a little bit, just 2.3%. And again, that's because the previous month, there was a rare negative 12.9% because of the base effect. And what's interesting is if you look at the overall transportation, month over month data from June to July, it was 1.3%. The transportation data from July to August is actually lower at 07 So even though you can see the price of gasoline is on a month to month basis is much higher this month compared to the previous month, the overall transportation cost, which includes gasoline and a bunch of other things, came in at a lower number. So probably that means that people are driving less, which makes sense if the price of gasoline is higher. And then finally, we have recreation, which as we saw on a month to month basis is actually negative, which I assume is because people are spending more money on food and shelter, which are pretty much necessities. So they have less money to spend on extracurricular activities. So when we look at these five major components, pretty much everything is going down. Even transport, the month over month data is showing that the rate of inflation is decreasing. So really, the only thing that's going up as a major component to CPI is shelter. Everything else is either going through disinflation or just flat out deflation, if you factor in the month to month data as well. So if the Bank of Canada wants inflation to go down, raising interest interest rates would only exacerbate the problem because it would also increase shelter, which is the largest component. And even though higher interest rates may help to lower the other components, it's probably not worth it just because shelter is such a large component. Like if shelter grows from 6% to let's say up one more percent to 7%, then that's going to add about a 0.3% to the overall CPI data. So if this was 7% this month, then this would be uh, instead of 1.7, it would be about 2% and the overall CPI would come in at 4.3%. So is it really worth trying to get like clothing or health or recreation down by 0.1% when you risk having shelter going up by 0.3% alone. I mean, shelter is already higher than pretty much everything else here, except for food. And food is already going down. You just have to give it time. So there's no point in increasing rates and potentially pushing shelter even higher when everything else is showing signs that if you just give it time, these numbers will likely naturally get lower by themselves. Like if health is only adding 0.3% to the overall inflation after 10 interest rate hikes, what do you think another 0.25 interest rate increase will do? At most, it'll drop this down by 0.1, but you risk shelter going up by a lot more than that because it's such a large component of the CPI. And other things like gasoline, and oil prices cannot be directly affected by the Bank of Canada because crude oil is a global commodity. And there's little to nothing Tiff Macklem can do to increase or decrease the price of gasoline. So increasing interest rates and risking the shelter year over year change to an even higher number, I don't think it's a smart move for the Bank of Canada. 
And I also think cutting rates at this point is also not a good idea because historically, the central bank doesn't cut just once. If you look at previous cycles over the last 30 years or so, whenever they have a period of interest rate increases and then you see a cut, it's one cut followed by additional rate cuts、uh, afterwards. And cutting rates now, I think, would be too premature because there are no signs that the economy is in really bad shape right now. And usually, central bankers don't want to take any action until it's too late. So, if they do decrease the interest rate right now, I think it'll send a message to the market that the Bank of Canada is now pivoting. And that could send the wrong signal. People might start to speculate again. And that's one possible way that inflation can come back in a strong way. And that is not what the Bank of Canada wants, which means I think for their next interest rate announcement, the only decision that makes sense. Is to hold interest rates where they are because that will give shelter some time to breathe so it shouldn't continue to go up while at the same time everything else because of the previous 10 rate hikes should continue to see deflationary pressure or disinflation like we've been seeing in the data so far and if they hold interest rates where they are then after a few months i would expect shelter to not move too much But everything else will probably see their numbers drop lower outside of a black swan event. I think that is the most logical path to take for the Bank of Canada. They shouldn't be cutting rates because inflation might come back. They shouldn't be increasing interest rates because that'll make the housing market even more unaffordable. But if they just don't do anything and just be patient and wait for the 10 rate hikes to get absorbed by the economy, Then I think this recent uptrend in the CPI over the last couple of months will be relatively short lived, and we'll see this starting to go back down by the end of the year. So, those are just some of my thoughts. We have one more CPI reading before the Bank of Canada's interest rate announcement. So, if you like this kind of inflation data breakdown, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because I'll be doing a video for the September CPI when that data comes out. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. Good luck with your finances, and until next time.